This is exactly right. <laughs> Welcome <coughs> to my favorite murder of the minisode. <laughs> Episode 101. <clears throat> I'm drowning. <laughs> okay. Someone help me. <laughs> Karen, grab my arm. <laughs> it's a quiet drowning on this side of the table. <laughs> oh, I sucked. I, George and I were having a regular conversation, uh-huh. just an exchange of, do you think this? And the way Georgia said no to me made me <laughs> suck water up the back of my nose like a reverse neti pot. <laughs> Mm. Right up in there. Well, no, I'm I, glad that I'm funny. <laughs> Isn't it a great feeling? It fucking feels great to make people laugh. <laughs> oh. To make choke people choke. Choke. That's the best. Spitting, choking. Mm-hmm. Um, anytime people say, you, I was listening to an episode, now my computer's ruined. Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> oh, yeah, because they spit all over their computer. Yes. Yeah. Got it. The ultimate. Because they threw their computer on the ground because it's so funny. <laughs> I decide to snap my MacBook in half because you're so funny. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this is where we read you your stuff. Emails of all kinds. We've gone now into, um, after the last one, I've read a ton of Safeway stories. Uh, oh, have you? Yeah, now we're just doing ge- general grocery store <laughs> anecdotes. I mean, what is this about? What are we? What is this? Well, let's get back to basics. Great. Stuff found in walls. Yes. An entire city. Oh my God. Hi, all. I was watching old episodes of Good Mythical Morning on YouTube recently. Shameless plug. <laughs> Clearly, it's your show. Yeah. And found a story I think you'll like. In 1963, a guy in Turkey found a mysterious room behind a wall in his home. As he dug further, he found out there was access to an entire underground city what? from his house. I've oh. seen this one on the now um, politically incorrect Ancient Aliens, which I didn't realize until we got emails from it that they uh is very problematic show oh. aside from the fact that they do not believe egyptians could have built anything which oh, is in and of itself very racist right they book people that are of very questionable uh holocaust didn't happen people exactly right oh, yes God. so um so can't be recommending ancient aliens anymore except for the fact that that and I guess good mythical morning are the only places I've ever heard of this <laughs> Turkish city underground. Holy shit. Okay, so <clears throat> okay. um the city is called Darren Kuyu. It's super old, built around the seventh century BC. So old. Before the Lord. It has multiple <laughs> floors, stables, chapels, and could hold twenty thousand people. The people who built the city also built access points and ventilation shafts all over the city. But after the tunnels were abandoned, I guess most of the access points were closed off. Lucky for this guy, there happened to be an access point in his house. Oh, fucking yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, you, you can't come, motherfucker. I'd be like, it's the ultimate man cave. <laughs> The <laughs> a whole city. Get my get my get my cable TV way down there. That's right, my recliner in oh, here. What's football is the best when it's in a small chapel, uh, <laughs> one mile underground, away from your wife. Clearly, this isn't something I found in a wall, but it just seemed like something you guys would be excited about. You're, You're right. exactly right. Um, now it's open to visitors, so maybe if you ever go to Turkey, you yeah. could visit. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm going there. Absolutely. Uh, SSDGM Natasha. Thanks, Natasha. Really, really well curated story, Natasha, because that's Darren Kuyu is right up my alley. Facts. This is a fact podcast. It is now. a fact based. This is a real place you can go to. You can get a tour. <laughs> Unlike the deep salt mines in Malta, where they say giants are mining salt. That's if they're you, not. If you go down deep enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these uh, are these uh, lizard the lizard people are core earth core people um they could be lizard people that could be flat earthers okay they could be journey to the center of the earthers okay. where they're just dedicated to the disney movie from the 60s sure. i mean that's that's last pos- podcast on the left territory <laughs> yeah we'll let about. we'll pass this one over to marcus and the boys that's right um uh, okay this one's called the headless mennonites okay my dear badass mfm family and then she says, Wie bist? And that then says, Pennsylvania Dutch for what's cracking? Yeah. 
Wow. Be beached. Uh, my husband and I, who was also a big fan, grew up in conservative Mennonite families and closely associated with the Amish culture. Ooh. Mm-hmm. That's a... I think that's a kind of an exciting fan poll yeah, right there. Yeah, we got the Mennonites. We got a Mennonite on our side, too. <laughs> oh, but these are, listen, but thankfully we came to a point in our early 20s where we realized we were in a cult and went home. Mm. <laughs> Anyhow, I don't know if that's on purpose, but it says any <laughs> H-A-W. <laughs> Anyhow, we still live and work in Holmes County, Ohio, shoulder to shoulder with a lot of Amish slash Mennonites. My husband is manager of the company his father owns and was interviewing a potential employee. My husband was asking this future employee about where he was from and he said uh, Mount Eaton Ohio my brother and then goes on to say my brother murdered our parents a few years ago but I wasn't involved <laughs> <laughs> that's right wash your hands and walk away girl yeah, he know he knows you're gonna google him <laughs> it's just like just gonna get this out of the way when you google me clear it I just want to let you know that I right. wasn't home that day that's right just put the word out there and then just let it go that's right the husband obviously my husband obviously son finished the interview and immediately told me about this bizarre interview we of course did some googling and we're stunned <laughs> to find out that this guy's Mennonite parents had been found dead at their farm shot in the head oh, no. he had also decapitated his father the cops found him in West Virginia with a gun and a chainsaw in his car. Oh. He has been on trial three times and has been found incompetent to stand trial due to his mental illnesses, even though two psychologists, the two psychologists have said his behaviors do not indicate he suffers from delusions he claims to have. Oh, he's lying. Yeah. So he sits in a mental hospital until he is, quote, competent to stand trial. This is just a small snack of the odd and strange happenings in Amish country that are often covered up by the dark and secretive culture. Hello, beard cutters and rapists. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Anytime you're... And then Sorry, it says... It's a beard cutter on par with a rapist. Apparently, that's a thing. Or maybe like they cut your beard off when you've done something wrong. It's not oh, sending you to jail. Whoa. Yeah. I'm going to have to look that up. Then here's an invitation. Anytime you're rolling, like now we want to come check it out. (laughs) Anytime you're rolling through Ohio, we would be honored to introduce you to uh, delicious cheeses, Amish mashed potatoes, and all the weird and creepy Amish gossip. Wow. Stay sexy and keep your electricity, Carrie. (laughs) (laughs) I I want to hear that gossip more than anything. Oh, I bet it's the creepiest. First, you have to say a prayer. Yeah. Straight out of Ezekiel. Right. And then, I mean, I shave my beard almost <laughs> daily, so I feel like I'm ready to go. I will I will cut my beard for this one special occasion. Yeah. What was it? Sorry. Did you have the uh, what's cracking in, in Amish? Vibisht. Vibisht. In reverse. Yeah. Okay. The subject line of this one is my mom was held at gunpoint. <gasps> Hi, my favorite squad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> cool. That's charming. I've been binging your episodes per usual, and one of your I Survived episodes reminded me of my mom and grandma being badasses. Mm. When my mom was seven or eight, she answered the door to a man asking for her dad. She invited him in, said one minute, and went to get my grandma. They lived in a small town. My mom wasn't primed to fear people coming to the door, so this wasn't out of the ordinary for her. When she returned with my grandma, the guy had pulled a huge <gasps> gun and told my grandma to give her all, give him all your money, jewelry, and possessions of value in the house. He made them take him around the house to get jewelry from each room. My mom and grandma went into survival mode, my mom making eye contact with my grandma and then just wiggled a ring finger, so my grandma turned her engagement and wedding ring around to hide the oh stone. Oh, my God. And then in parentheses, it says, my favorite part of the story. <laughs> That's right, because an eight-year-old thought to do that. Yeah. Genius. Um, At the same time, I'm like, give him the fucking wedding ring. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, if he asks for it, but sure. don't flash it around. Don't be like, hey, you want this too? <laughs> yeah, it's like a huge Zsa Zsa Gabor yeah. rock. <laughs> grandma, turn it in. He'll know we're rich. Um, he then tells my grandma to drive him somewhere about 20 minutes away, giving turn-by-turn directions. Apparently, he was smoking a joint in the back and high as a kite. So when they arrived at whatever creepy-ass building, he told my grandma to give him her keys. Uh, he didn't notice her slip the car key off the ring. Oh, my God. <laughs> so genius he put the key ring on a fire hydrant across the street said wait five minutes and then they would get the then they could get the keys back uh-huh. the second he went across the street and turned around the corner my grandma and mom booked it out of there Hell and yeah. this is my family story of <laughs> i survive my mom didn't tell me the story until i was in middle school at as school shootings were becoming more and more common i'm 21 now in junior college and her point was there are bad things that happen in the world, but that doesn't mean you need to be scared of the world and hide. Take the world by storm like the strong woman that you are 
um, prepared and safe. Stay sexy and don't forget you're smarter than the bad guys. CC. Oh my God. But I want to know the rest <laughs> of the story. Did they catch the guy? I bet they did it, it, right? Oh. They probably didn't or they would, I bet that she would be in so. there. Yeah. But I love the idea that just it's like, take advantage of that scenario and just like try to get like the, how did she do that the advanced thinking of get the car key off mm-hmm. the ring give him all the keys he wants yeah that's good the, the ring thing and the keys are good thinking like stuff that you don't i feel like i'd be too scared to try of in course. that moment you know of course but well, if you're high if you're fucking stone to the bone in the back seat yeah that's right remember stone people think everything's funny you turn on a <laughs> song if little elo on the radio would have distracted totally. that guy for seven minutes oh they're so easy to trick and confuse <laughs> stay stay present stay focused that's right Maybe she got a little fucking contact <laughs> eye and was like, oh, I'm not taking this ring, this fucking key off. Okay. This is called My Mother's Ex-Boyfriend, The Cocaine Cowboy. Whoa. And then it says, hi. <laughs> uh, you know when you date someone and break up and run into them years later only to be like, yikes, I really dodged a bullet there? Mm-hmm. That happened to my mom, except she saw him in a newspaper and he was dead. Oh, no. <laughs> A few months ago, she told me about an ex of hers, uh, Andrew Carter Thornton II, definitely bound to end up as some kind of criminal with that name. They were introduced by a mutual friend and started dating. He was dashing, charming, well-educated, successful, worked for the DEA, Uh uh, and took her to great restaurants. That's all I fucking need. (laughs) That's my only one. Say no more. Ask no questions. Exactly. Things were going well, but then the restaurants became seedier and seedier. He started flaking a lot, and his stories never really seemed to check out. When she asked what the deal was uh, with that shit, he said he was undercover for the DEA and couldn't be seen out or would blow his cover. Uh, That's a great story. She didn't buy it and said, bye, girl, to his shady ass. (laughs) (laughs) A few years later, in 1985, she saw a headline in the newspaper, and then in parentheses it says, above the fold, quote, (laughs) she likes to say, meaning it's like front page report. That's big news. That read, quote, cocaine and a dead bear. Her boy, Andrew, had jumped from his drug smuggling plane, his first parachute and hadn't opened for a mysterious and perhaps nefarious reason, we'll never really know. His second clearly hadn't done the job, and he was found dead in a Knoxville, Tennessee driveway. His crash landing earned him the title of Cocaine Cowboy. Wow. According to the articles I read and lifted from, he was found wearing a bulletproof vest and Gucci loafers. (laughs) Carrying a Browning 9mm automatic pistol, a 22 caliber Derringer, ammunition, night vision goggles, books with names and codes, thousands of dollars in cash, and six Cougarans, and then all caps, treasure! Treasure! <laughs> but only six? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's like, that's so- why you fell from the fucking ground. Those <laughs> things are heavy, right? <laughs> He sewed them into the lining of his jacket. Yeah. Treasure. He also had food rations and vitamins uh, and a compass, an altimeter, identification papers and two different names, a membership card to the Miami Jockey Club. <laughs> what the fuck? And the key to the airplane. <laughs> now, Miami Jockey Club, like horse jockeys? I guess. What the fuck? I don't know. Where was he? Why do you need a compass at the jockey club? Like, um, are you going to the forest? Are you going to Germany? Is that what an altimeter is? Uh, I, I thought, I oh, think wait, I said an altimeter. Com- and I, I also think- said a compass. Is that yes. why you thought that? But I think altimeters are in planes. I don't, that's okay. my guess. I don't know. Well, I don't, never, I don't know. Well, I never uh, and then told anything <laughs> in, of relevant information. <laughs> and then it says, oh, also 77 pounds of cocaine. Oh, shit. Or literally millions of dollars you know the basics yeah a few months later the georgia bureau of investigation reported that a dead 175 pound bear was found among 40 open containers of cocaine <gasps> matching the packaging used by thornton oh I know. no the, the bear poor, od that poor this is that poor bear od on the cocaine oh, and had God. presumably been thrown from the plane mid-flight because it was carrying too much weight Wait, no. Let me read that again. (laughs) (laughs) That poor bear had OD'd on the cocaine that had presumably been thrown from the plane mid-flight because it was carrying too much weight. He's he's going down his checklist. He's like, Cougarans, check. Altimeter, check. A bear, check. Check. Get the bear on this plane. A bear on cocaine. (laughs) That poor bear. Oh, that poor bear. Turns out Andrew was a former narcotics officer and suspended lawyer who had not been under 
undercover for the DEA, as he said, though he had worked for them at one point, but instead had been on the run from them while he was dating my mom. Wow. He'd been working for a huge weapons and drug smuggling operation. And according to one article, he became one of the highest ranking members. This whole story is allegedly part of a larger conspiracy regarding drug trafficking slash the CIA slash a a major weapons theft. But that could be a mini soda in itself. So I'll just leave the story at that. Stay sexy and don't leave your drugs where bears can get them. Sam. Shit, Sam. <laughs> that was great. That was legendary. It was like a touch of D.B. Cooper. Totally. It was a touch of that story that you did On about... the tracks? The, yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then, of course, bears. And then bears. Bear ODs. Sorry for the uh, animal nature people out there that... We had to include that. Who no, get- all bears were harmed in the making of this <laughs> mini sewed. But at the same time, they harm themselves. That's right. And addiction is a disease. Say no to Coke. That poor bear thought it was like powdered sugar. He's <laughs> like, mm, delicious cereal. Or I whatever. see him like diving, doing a dive, <laughs> a perfect dive. And then he's walking around smoking and talking. About we should open a restaurant. Oh my God. A restaurant <laughs> called Bear Essentials. <laughs> it's all honey. Oh my God. We got to get some bees in on this. Sticks his head in a beehive. (laughs) With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie-smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need break out of your dinner rut and make deliciousness part of every week with hello fresh i love that even though hello fresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself and that instead of just ordering takeout i'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just it feels good so for 80 dollars off your first month of hello fresh go to hellofresh.com slash murder 80 and enter murder 80 it's like receiving eight meals for free only at hellofresh.com slash murder 80 promo code murder 80 Go by. Okay. The subject line is, can my house get haunted by this? Hey, guys, just wanted to share this odd story that happened recently. Yay. Please always, always show your odd stories. Um, I was in front of my house raking leaves, as one does when living in a northeastern, in northeastern Ohio, with my three-year-old steadily on my heels. I was keeping a very close eye on him when I saw him squeal with delight as he picked something up off the ground. Uh-oh. I ran over and saw that he had found an old, rusty, heart-shaped necklace. <gasps> I told him it looked pretty old, and he exclaimed that it was so cool and put it around his neck. Oh, my God, no. I felt it was totally harmless and finished my raking before we headed back inside. He continued to play with the necklace all afternoon, putting it on various stuffed animals, our dog, even let me try it on a few times. Oh, God. Soon... If uh, soon it was bath time and a battle ensued of me trying to take this necklace off him, I finally caved and just let him keep it on yeah. for bath time because sometimes you can only fight with a three year old so many times <laughs> in a day. It's so true. Jesus um, we did our usual nighttime routine, and after he fell asleep, I took the necklace off and took it downstairs. As I was walking with it, I noticed it wasn't just a heart shaped necklace, but in fact, a locket. <gasps> I was in the kitchen when I got the bright idea to try to open it. It was sealed shut pretty good. What so if I, his photo is inside of it? <laughs> the kid's photo. <gasps> and that's why he loves it so much. <laughs> but it's him in a coffin. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. That's sorry. not it. No. I was in the kitchen when I got the bright idea to try to open it. It was sealed shut pretty good. So I resorted to a butter knife to pry it open. I eager, eagerly wanted to see what sort of pictures it held inside. Only to my utter horror, as I cracked open the locket, gray dust flew everywhere. <gasps> it was fucking ashes no! inside this motherfucking locket. No! <laughs> I literally screamed. Oh. My son was playing with this. Oh, and he just got a fucking bath with it all day. Oh, my God. 
I'd like to say that I tried finding the owner to the necklace, but couldn't figure out how to tell them that I opened the locket <laughs> and 80% of them went down my kitchen drain. So I just tied it in a bag and carefully placed it in the garbage outside. I'm just really hoping my house doesn't become haunted by this. <laughs> Hope you guys get a laugh out of this. I can't wait to see you in Pittsburgh in March. On the, at the Friday show, stay sexy and don't let your kids play with old rusty lockets, Nicole. Oh, my God. Mm. Why did they put ashes in a necklace? I get it. I get it. Like, <laughs> as, like, a 13-year-old, I would have been like, I'm going to put my grandma's ashes, and, and it'll always be close to my heart, and then you lose yeah, but it. but it's not like they let you scoop them out. It's not like the family gets a, their share. I think that happens sometimes. Oh, no. Yeah. Like, do you want a little piece of grandma? Also, maybe, it, yeah. Also, maybe it wasn't that. Like, maybe it was ashes from, like, a flower that a guy had given her, and she Ooh. burned it. <laughs> She's super goth. She's, She's really the, goth. She was the first goth. Yes. It was 1892. And now that little three-year-old <laughs> speaking in tongues. And it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Mothman prophecies. <laughs> that's a great, that's a great story for us. Do you know <laughs> really what I mean? Like, it's, it's like... Yeah, I love it. It could have been an antique. It could have been anything. No, it's filled with human cremains. 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 Learn that word from this podcast. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, This is like a um, lighthearted. Oh, (laughs) great. (laughs) This is called Magic Spit. Okay. All right. Hi, guys. I recently listened to a mini set about parents making up lies that you believe forever, and this made me think of something my parents did. My parents were totally normal, but had a few weird traditions. When my sisters and I were growing up and got a boo-boo, we would go to either of them, crying and begging for them to make it better. What we were really asking for was magic spit. Mm. You see, our parents would spit on their fingers and rub it into whatever bruise or cut we had. (laughs) This miraculously cured whatever we were crying or in pain about because they convinced us that the magic spit was the cure all and all. I never disagreed until I was in fourth grade and was alone with a friend riding bikes and she fell and skidded her knee. It was bleeding pretty badly and we didn't know what to do. So I responded with, well, I can try to put some of my magic spit on it, but I'm not sure it'll work. (laughs) She was so freaked out and scared. And I guess I sounded so confident about my spit that she agreed. So yes, I spit on her scraped (laughs) bloody kneecap and we called it a day. Nice. After we got back to her house, uh, her mom asked what happened, and she said, don't worry, Kimmy spit on it, and it's all better. <laughs> so that's when I found out you should not spit in cuts, especially not your own, because it's extremely unsanitary, and that my parents were actually pretty gross. <laughs> Thanks for being my go-to. Pick me up when I'm in need of a good laugh. Stay sexy and don't spit in people's wounds, Kimmy. Shit. <laughs> so don't spit in people's wounds. Spit? I mean, you'd think it'd be good, right? Well, I think... The idea that it worked like such an insane placebo on those children is pretty amazing. Yeah. Where it's like you have a crying kid and then they just believe that everything's solved. Totally. I, I would keep that lie going for as long as right into college. Right until there is an infection that yeah. happens. Right up until it. the amputation. <laughs> right. I think <laughs> parental spit is okay. Uh, spit outside the family. Don't yeah, do it. Keep it in the family right. until someone gets gangrene. That's right. And uh, and stay sexy. And don't get murdered. <laughs> Goodbye. Elvis, you want a cookie?